Hey everyone! If you are watching this video, what to expect when you are expecting your first RV, I know, catchy name, right? Then you have probably recently placed an order or are awaiting your first brand new camper. Congratulations! Briefly, the reason I am making this video is because I remember in 2015 when I bought my first teardrop. I looked at that price tag and I thought, okay, I can like kind of afford this, but then I had no idea how much more was going to be involved when I bought a camper and all of the things I was going to have to buy just to make it a pleasant experience. So today I want to tell you the first 10 necessities I think you should buy when you buy your first RV. So let's dig in. Right off the bat, you're going to need chocks and blocks. These are going to help level and stabilize your camper. Now a chalk is that little wedge-shaped item that goes behind your tire to keep your camper from rolling downhill. That's like a good thing, right? Now most of the people watching this channel are probably buying something similar to a tag, a tab, a small teardrop, or tiny camper that is most likely a single axle. If you have a single axle, then I would say four chocks is plenty one on each side of each tire, and luckily chocks are super cheap. Next, blocks. Now the smaller campers are not gonna have anything that allows you to level your camper from side to side. Leveling from front to back is easy. You just raise and lower the jack. But from side to side, you're gonna have to put blocks underneath your tires. Some campers come with blocks, but if yours doesn't, then I would say getting a standard set of 10 is gonna be sufficient. Moving on to power. Obviously, you're going to need a power cord. Most of the smaller RVs are going to run off of a 30 amp system. And chances are your new RV should probably come with a power cord. But if it doesn't, definitely put that on your list. The next thing you might need is a power adapter. If you have a 30 amp camper, I would recommend getting a 30 amp to a standard 110 volt system that would plug into something like your house. Now there are two types of these adapters. One of them they call a dog bone style, which has a little extension between the two plugs. And the other type is a smaller, simple block with no cable. Now the only issue I've found with the smaller block is that if you go to a house where they might have maybe an inset outlet, sometimes that block is too big to fit into the outlet. So I prefer the dog bone style that gives that little bit of extension. Another adapter I bought when I first got my camper was the 30 amp to 50 amp adapter because I thought, what if I'm at a campground where all they have is a 50 amp spot and I need to plug in? Well, I will tell you in the last four and a half years of living on the road, I have never once used that adapter. So, eh, probably wouldn't put it on the necessity list. While we're talking about power, number five is a surge protector. No matter where you plug in, you can't be sure of the power that is entering into your camper, and the last thing you want to do is do electrical damage that could be really expensive to fix. While a surge protector might cost one to two hundred dollars, it's definitely a worthwhile accessory to prevent a lot of damage being done to your camper. Moving on to a topic that, as many of you know, is near and dear to my heart, locking your camper. This girl may have had a camper stolen one time. Ah. Now, I know better than anyone that any lock is simply a deterrent. Every lock can be broken, but the more locks you have, uh, the less likely it is that your camper is going to be stolen. The first lock I recommend is a wheel lock. This is a claw that's going to go around your tire to keep somebody from basically driving off with your camper. My favorite wheel lock is the Trimax 65. I like it because I have used it for four and a half years and it's never failed me. And it's also very compact. A lot of the wheel locks have a really long handle on them, which makes them more difficult to store. Next, you need to lock the coupler on your trailer, the hitch to your vehicle, and the pin lock to keep the handle down. Now there are a lot of really great coupler locks out there, but my favorite is this one combo pack made by Master Lock because it has all three locks and the best part is they all use the same key. 
because like I have way too many keys. You should see my key ring. So this master lock has the hitch pin to lock your hitch to your vehicle. It's got the coupler lock that fits up into where your ball would normally sit if you were hitching up to your car. And it has the pin lock, which keeps anybody from actually opening up your coupler to hitch it up to a vehicle. All right, number eight is an absolute necessity for anybody unless you're like me and Kendrick and you don't use your bathroom. But there are actually a lot of campers that don't come with your black water hose. So you definitely need a black water hose to empty your black and gray water tanks into an appropriate sewer dump. So that's the dirty water. But what about the clean water? You definitely need a fresh water hose so that if you're out and about and you need to fill your tanks, you are able to do that with a nice clean hose. Now the first freshwater hose I decided to buy was the cheapest one, which was only 10 feet long. And I can tell you there were so many places that 10 feet was not enough. So I definitely recommend getting 20, 25, 30 foot hoses. Now, if you are ever planning to hook up to what they call city water, which is where you might go to a campground, hook up to their water straight into your camper. That is constant water pressure that is being thrown into your RV. And again, we have no control over what that pressure is. So they make a great little gadget called a water pressure regulator. This is another one of those inexpensive but necessary accessories because adding a water pressure regulator will keep that water system from damaging your water pump, which could be quite costly to replace. And last but not least, moving on to towing. My number one recommended accessory is a sway bar. I often have people asking me if a sway bar is necessary. You know what? It might not be necessary on something like a tag, but it's $100 and it could also save your life. This sway bar is going to provide friction between your camper and your tow vehicle so that when it's really windy out or icy, um, it's going to help prevent your camper from fishtailing. Now, if you have a larger, heavier RV, you may need more, like an equalizer hitch, but if you're looking at a TAG, TAB 320, TAB 400, the sway bar is going to be just what you need. Okay, one last thing and then I swear I'm done. I didn't realize, I totally forgot to mention, if your camper comes with electric brakes, your tow vehicle actually needs a brake controller to use those brakes. Now some of the newer vehicles will come with a built-in brake controller, but if it doesn't, you're going to need to buy one. So we found this really super easy to use wireless Bluetooth brake controller made by Kurt. It's just plug and play. There's an app that goes on your phone to control it. And it's one of the easiest things you can ever buy to install yourself. I will link to all of my recommended products in the description below. And by shopping through our Amazon links, you help us continue to provide content like this for you while we are on the road. And we thank you very much. So here's to making your first RV experience a safe and fun one. Love and light. The next thing you might need is a power adapter. A dapper. A dapper. Power adapter.